What's up guys, Ben here from Cultured Kiwi Photography. So I'm here today to teach you how to manage your photos because it's a problem we all have nowadays. I mean with digital cameras we're taking more and more and more photos every day but we don't really know how to catalogue them. Back in the day this was much harder, you'd have to have a huge dedicated shelf in your house just for all your film and photos. But today we have it much easier. We can have a few hard drives in the corner of our house and that will pretty much do anything. So, without further wasting of anyone's time, let's just crack straight into it. I use Lightroom. I imagine most people use Lightroom. I store my photos on different hard drives. I have in total three at the moment that I use to manage all of my photos, which adds up to around 58,000 photos at the moment. These are the last three hard drives I've had. This question came about when I published my latest newsletter, which you can sign up to using the link below. Every month I put out a newsletter just explaining things a bit deeper into detail, running through my favourite photos. One of the little small articles that I wrote was about stretching your photographic muscle, which was getting out every day to take around 50 photos. A friend called Andrew asked me how I go about cataloguing all of these images in Lightroom because it does get overwhelming when you're taking more and more photos every day. I start by taking my memory card out of my camera, like everyone, putting it into my memory card reader, and then starting the process in Lightroom. I head in here to import, and normally the SD card will show up here. Here I have all of my hard drives, my backup one, backup two, and backup three. So we uncheck all, start with this one, end with this is a good weekend walk around London. So we'll take here. Yeah. I always leave build standard previews because that gives you a chance to edit the images after the fact. Uh, whether you have your hard drive plugged in or not, which is the main place of storage, it builds a preview for this file so you can review your images. And with the smart previews here ticked, then you can edit those photos and sync those changes the next time your hard drive plugs in. It's an incredible thing that's built into Lightroom and if you're not using it, you've got to start using it now. Make sure all are unchecked, highlight the ones that you want checked, tick them, I'll name them, so I go down here to renaming files and I'll call this. Um, I always start with a date and then what I'll do is I'll run down and add uh, some keywords, so London Weekend Walk and then I'll copy that and then I'll just put it into this and that will run down to my backup folder and show all of the days that I've shot so use there 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there we go, we've got a good run going here then hit import now it'll start to populate the photos and then start to build the previews. So I'll catch up with you again once all that's done. We've got all the files in now and at first glance it looks a little overwhelming. We've got 222 photos in there, which is really nothing. You should be able to do a thousand in well under an hour, easy. But 222 we can probably rip through in 10 minutes, but I'll speed up the process and just show you exactly what you need to see. But when you start to import them in, you'll get them in grid view, like this. And I basically just have a quick run through to make sure everything's there. And then from then I'll head into loop view, which I believe is E on the keyboard. And basically from there you can run through and have a look at all your pictures. And what I do is I put one finger on the one key and one finger on the arrow right key. And I just basically run through. And any picture that I think is worth giving a second glance, I'll put in one star next to it and then we'll go back through them later and see how they go. So here's the process. Any photo that sort of is worth a second glance, don't think too much about it, just we can always go back. So if you're thinking about two, you can sort of roll back between them or you can compare to the one next to it or compare to other ones by pushing C on the keyboard and then you, it'll show you compare. Push C again to get out of that, compare between the two, and then we just keep keep going. So I'll speed this up now, but you'll get the process. And there we have it. I think that was around 
three minutes to run through 222 photos and now what we do is head down here to the filter button and we add this one star filter now that brings us down to a total of 17 photos so we've gone from 222 to 17 that are worth a second glance see this is a very quick way to get down to a decent number of photos now these are the ones you want to look at but should you ever want to go back and look at the rest of the photos you can just simply click the photo untick the star and it will show you all of the photos that surround that image which is a great handy little tip I prefer to work in this filtered view it stops it being so overwhelming and helps really focus you in on what you need to do from here I'll go through and look and see which are the best ones so I think yeah, this be better than this one this one, I like this this, also like it uh, not so good Basically I run two stars being something that's okay, three is worth posting, four is something that's worth writing about, and five is your portfolio ones. They don't come along so often, so don't be ashamed if you're not hitting five very often. So I just open this up here and just make sure that I've got the right one. I don't like it because you see down the bottom this lady's foot's been cut off, so I'd ideally like to have that in there. So change this one to a 0 and change this one to a 1 and then dive back into my filtered view and you see here we have a much better image. This is a billboard, I quite liked it. So now what I do is just highlight all of them and we head into the develop module at the top. Now I'll drop my 1s and head into a 2 star view which takes me down to now 13 photos. I had the first image I then come along to the presets tab here where I have all of the different presets. At the moment I'm just working with a few uh, which I tend to use and I have my basic preset here which I'll add in down below if you're interested in getting it. Um, and from here you can basically, it just it's a small tweak to the image. You see there's, there's not much in it but, but it really does help the image pop. Um, it's a slight curve adjustment. I left the colours alone because I'll do that um, per image. Sharpening, noise reduction, uh, any lens corrections. With the Fujis, these are built in, but with the Canons, you need to apply them, which basically takes the distortion out because of the lens and some slight dehazing. And yeah, that's basically it. a little bit of clarity and saturation just to help it give it that extra pop. Now, with these Fuji photos, or the street photos, I've been running with the Velvia, which really darkens the image again, but sometimes that can be a bit much. So if we just go back to our standard, standard profile and apply our basic preset, we'll work with that for now. So then I'll come and hit auto, generally, if, if you're feeling lazy, and just run through these. You want to add a bit more contrast. Perhaps in this image, you just have a look what it looks like with maximum and minimum, and then run through. You can also, if you want to do it tech, which is what the auto function does, if you hold down Alt, uh, the Option key, and drag the sliders, say for shadows, it'll show you where you're coming in with the shadows. So it'll show you where the absolute black is, and how if you drag it down, you can see that that part of the image, the bottom of the boat there, is just going into complete blackness. There's no details left anymore. So, in that case, I don't mind it. I don't want to draw the eye there. Highlights the same. You can add that in and show where you're all of a sudden losing information. Generally, auto will bring you right to that point. But you can also do it to taste. I think to taste is probably a lot better way to go about it. Uh, whites, blacks, deepen it a little bit. And there we have it. I'm happy with that. So we take that as the first image. Then what I'll do is I run through the rest in a similar pattern. If you want to apply a preset to a number of images from any tab, I mean develop, I'm usually in here, so I'll apply my basic here and then I'll hold down shift, select all of the images and just hit sync. And just if you've done nothing to the images, you can just leave all of them ticked, hit synchronize, and it'll run that preset across all of the images just like that. Now, let's say we've edited all these images. We'll just say they're all done. We then highlight all of the images, run up here to the top, hit export, 
And what I do in this case is I have a Google Drive set up folder here on my computer. Uh, and inside that I have my blog post folder, which is where all of my photos go. I then choose this folder, I put it into a subfolder, use a text expander snippet to add the date, I put in uh, London Weekend Walk, I take that, put that down here, I have another one for exporting photos which puts my name in the date and cultured Kiwi, and I'll just put this in again, move the date there. And then I'll generally do 500 uh, kilobytes for the file and 2000 on the long edge, which is perfectly fine for online and it stops people printing out big copies of your images if you're worried about that. I'm not. So what that will do is then export all 13 of those files, put them onto my Google Drive, and from there I can access them from anywhere on my phone. And I've written an article about how to easily put DSLR photos onto uh, your Instagram or things like this and using Google Drive is the perfect way to do for this because you can sit here, edit all your photos on the computer nicely and then easily upload them um, to the internet. That way now I already have the copy of the photos on the card, the copy of the photos on my external hard drives and I'll then back that up to my um, mass storage that I have here which all of my hard drives sync to and there we have it we have a total photo management strategy that can be done 222 photos in a very short amount of time thanks for watching the video if you liked the video please hit like if you want to see more you can subscribe down below uh, i'll also put a link down there for my journal which i release monthly if you want to have a small uh, quick read through which has basically the top photo links for the month everything regarding photo news, what I'm doing, things like this about photo management, little projects I have on the go, things you can get involved in, and it's just an easier way to talk to, to everyone that watches my content. So again, enough of that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.